Hi. So I'm going to start with something maybe you've heard a lot about, uh, the, the Mars Curiosity mission. So in April 2004, JPL, the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in my hometown of Los Angeles, California, and NASA decided that we, as a race, were going back to Mars and we'd be sending a rover. And this rover would be unlike anything we'd ever sent to Mars before. It would be about the weight and size of a small car. It would run off a plutonium battery that would last two years. And it would carry, most importantly, 10 times the mass of scientific instruments of all of the previous rovers sent to Mars combined. An amazing achievement. And as you know, we did it. It worked. 253 days, 352 million miles all the way to Mars. That's an average of 60,000 miles per hour for those of you keeping track. And when it hit the atmosphere at Mach 40, excuse me, Mach 20, it slowed down with a heat shield to a measly Mach 2 where a supersonic parachute deployed, retro rockets then fired. And finally, in a maneuver that was literally untested anywhere in the universe, not here on Earth, not on Mars, only simulated in the computer boxes of JPL, the rover fell the final 100 meters using something called the Sky Crane, which you can think of as a rocket-powered jetpack crane. And when the rover was wheels down on the surface, the crane cut away, flew off into the distance, and safely crash-landed. Now, there's a rover on Mars. But maybe there's a question that you haven't heard about so much. And that's, that's a better one, I think. Why did we send the rover to Mars? Because after all, it took about 10 years to plan, it took th tens of thousands of man hours, and maybe most importantly to you, it cost four and a half billion dollars. It's true, right about there. So why did we do it? Well, okay, there's the canonical answer, which is what you're all thinking right now, for the science. And that's a great answer, sure, okay. Because it turns out that Mars is actually an excellent analog for what we can expect Earth to be in the pretty far future. So if we can send a robot there and investigate what's going on now and in Mars's past, we can have a better understanding of what's going on here on Earth. And that's, of course, good for us, seeing as it's our home planet, for the foreseeable future. But I think there's a better reason, a more compelling answer to the why question. And to, to get at that, I'm going to have to go back just a step and explain to you just a little bit about my story. So I had the amazing opportunity to spend three summers interning at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory right near my, ho my home. I started that at the, after this junior year of my high school, at, in high school. And while I was there, I did all sorts of technical things, as you can imagine. My first internship, I worked on the radar for the entry, descent, and landing stage of the mission. During my second internship, I worked on a database that allowed better launch vehicle selection. And during my third internship, arguably garnering the most attention, I developed an iOS app that allowed you to drive essentially a stunt double of Curiosity in the Mars yard, where you can see me here, standing next to a clone of the Curiosity rover. And I was very excited about those te that technical work, absolutely. But I did other things there as well. I talked to a lot of people, both inside JPL and outside. And I noticed when I talked to these people an astonishing trend. You see, not just the scientists and the technologists and the engineers, who you would, of course, expect to be interested in the mission, wanted to hear what I had to say, both about what I was doing and the mission in general. But everyone. And this puzzled me. Why is it that people who ordinarily have no interaction with the red planet or with this one-ton hunk of steel and glass and silicon that would eventually sit on its surface. Why would they care? And I thought about this a lot, and I think, I think during my second summer internship, right near the end, I, kindly, I, I finally kind of figured it out. So here's New York Times Square, and there are thousands of people who have come out to watch on the landing night of Curiosity and find out what will happen to the rover, whether or not it will make it to what we call the seven minutes of hell. And of course it did, but why did they come out? They could just as easily have stayed in their homes and watched NCAA tournaments, or some reality TV show where it's actually warm. But instead, no, they sit on the street and watch this. Why? It has to do with what space travel is about. You see, here's the secret, maybe the punchline. If you came in and you're gonna take one thing away, here it is. We go to space not to find things out there, but to change us here at home. We go to space for ourselves. And I know, I know that sounds cryptic, I understand. So what is space travel? This is what I think, if you can distill it down to its most basic essence, this is what I imagine space travel is. It is humankind as a single entity, as one race, 
taking the most impossible task, choosing the highest goal, the toughest objective, the smallest ring through which we can jump, and saying, we're going to do that, and we're going to do it in 10 years, and we're going to do it for $4.5 billion. And all of a sudden, it sounds a lot cheaper, right? So when we do it successfully, as we have inarguably done with curiosity, it changes the world. It galvanizes the entire world. And I mean it. I don't mean just North America or or the West, or the East, I mean everybody. And not just the middle-aged people who made it happen, but the children, from those who can remember it, and the oldest people who see it, and everyone in between. They feel the impact of landing on Mars. And it changed, I've felt this change personally. I have personally felt this desire to change my role models towards these people. These are the people who made it happen. These are the people at JPL, the three or 4,000 who were able to do it, and for only four and a half billion dollars, change the entire world. So I plan to be going back to JPL this summer, and I hope and expect to do great work with my heroes. And I hope that next time you think or hear about a space mission, you'll remember why we venture forth, because it's for you, and it's for all of us. Thank you.